Hi guys, in this tutorial we will create this water shader focusing on the watercolor. A water shader can consist of a lot of different effects. Transparency, color absorption, caustics, reflectiveness, aeration, movement of this aeration, etc. In this tutorial we will do the watercolor based on the concept of absorption. So we're going to work in URP and here we have a plane. I have used the unity terrain to dent it a bit so it looks like a pond. And now let's just create a new shader and a material and attach it to our plane. To start with, the water is transparent. We won't use the alpha output in the shader to do this. Instead, we will access what's on the screen before we render our object with the node called scene color. So the scene color node provides information about what's already rendered on the screen before we are to render our water plane. And to be able to do this, we need to mark our shader as transparent. If we plug in the scene color straight away, we get this transparency effect. And if we're to go back and set a property for the watercolor and multiply the scene color by our color, we now have some naive transparency. The way color works in real life is related to light absorption. When light hits the surface of an object, some of it is reflected straight away, that's called specular reflection, and the rest enters the object, bounces around, some of it is absorbed and some of it escapes. The light that escapes is called diffused reflection, and the diffused reflection is what we perceive as color. For a simplified example, a red apple in sunlight absorbs all the wavelengths apart from red and only the red light escapes so we perceive it as red for the same reason a blue object in red light would appear almost black there's no blue light to be reflected and the red light is absorbed so the same happens with blue water so to implement this we need a color to be absorbed and an absorption value how much of this color should be absorbed now, what's an absorption coefficient? It's measurement of how far can light go through a material before it's fully absorbed. This is different for different wavelengths and different materials. We have the following formula, where alpha is the absorption coefficient, A is the percentage of light being absorbed, and X is the thickness of the material. So just to try this, let's set a property for the thickness of the material, even though we will eventually have this based on the depth of the water. Let's take that formula and turn it into nodes. So we can either group this like that or turn it into a subgraph depending on how we want this organized. I'm going to leave it as a group so we can keep looking at it. Now let's multiply that absorption value by the absorption color. So we can think of this absorption coefficient as the percentage of color we want to see and that's why we're multiplying here.
and here we no longer want to be multiplying by multiplying where it thinned and we want to remove the color that has been absorbed so we want to subtract Next, we probably don't want to be selecting the color to be absorbed, but rather we want to select our watercolor as we did earlier. So instead of absorb color, let's do one minus watercolor, which would give us the absorption color based on the end color we want. This works best with less saturation and you can decide which parameter makes more sense to you. Select an absorption color or watercolor directly. Next we want the watercolor to change based on the depth of the water. We want the absorption value to be controlled by the depth. The deeper the water it is, the more color is absorbed. We would need to calculate the depth based on our point of view or in other words the camera position. Essentially, we're asking ourselves, how much water am I looking through? To calculate this, we need to understand two nodes. The first one is scene depth. This provides the camera depth buffer before our object is rendered. The object that the shader is applied to, in our case, the water plane. It has a few options, and if we select the eye coordinate system, it will be transformed in such a way that the camera or eye is sitting at 000. zero, zero. To understand this better, here is a quick overview of the rendering process. At first our object is at local space coordinate system, then that's converted to world space, then to view space or eye space, then clip space, then screen space. The local coordinates are the object's coordinates relative to its origin. These are then transformed to world coordinates relative to the world's origin, and then these are transformed to eye coordinates relative to the camera. This is what the eye option in scene depth gives us. Essentially tells us how far from the camera the object is. The second node we need is screen position. To understand this node, we need to continue looking at the rendering pipeline. After we have calculated the view coordinates, we then calculate the clip space coordinates. That transforms the coordinates to fit in a box from minus one, minus one, minus one to one, one, one. Everything that's outside this box gets clipped. This coordinates transformation is different depending on the type of projection we use in perspective or orthographic. What is in the camera first time stays and everything else gets clipped. The last step is to transform this to screen space. To do this, we need to know how far is the camera from the projection plane. In game dev quite often, the 3D coordinates are represented not by three, but four values. The fourth being W, which stands for weight. This fourth value allows us to do more by giving us more data. Usually at this point of the coordinate transformations, you would be left with just X and Y, represented the screen position. But selecting the option also allows for the Z and W to be carried over. So if you don't select it, Z, Z and W are going to be zero. And if you do, the values from the previous stage get carried over. In this case, the W is the distance from the camera to the water at each vertex. So if we subtract the screen position from the scene depth, we get the distance we're looking for. And that corresponds to the X in our absorption formula.
So let's plug that in and we have our final result. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.